Hey, what's up? I'm gonna show you how I get 3D scans into Blender and process them, clean them up, and get them ready for me to use as assets for my scenes and stuff like that. So here I have a couple uh, scans that I just did. They are pretty rough. So you can see there's like a bunch of extra stuff that I don't need. Uh, and these are from Polycam. When I import them, I download them as GLTF. What's nice about GLTF is that you can just click and drag. I have a second monitor here. Just click and drag them, drop them, hit import, and uh, it's right here. I'm not sure if the older versions of Blender let you do that, but I'm using 4.2.3 and it, it works pretty well. And then immediately I go into edit mode. So I tab into edit mode and I select the points. I select all of them with A and then I hit M to merge by distance. And here it says remove zero vertices because I've already merged it, but normally it merges like 400 vertices or something. So from the scan, you can kind of see where it's more detailed and less detailed. So there's more geometry closer to the rock and then a little bit less as it goes out. So I basically want just this area where there is more detail and I don't really need the rest. And the quickest way to get rid of all of that geometry in a clean way is to use a Boolean. So I'm going to add a uh, cylinder here. That's over there. And I'm going to go into uh, X-ray mode and then tab into edit mode for it. So I'm just going to look at where if I go into wireframe mode, it'd be easier to see. Yeah. So I'm going to select this. I have proportional editing here turned on. And I'm going to use uh, G and then Shift Z lets you kind of move on everything but the Z axis. So if I hit G, Shift Z, you can see that I can move on everything but the Z. So that's going to be make it e making it easier for me to kind of um, use proportional editing and get as much of the detailed area as I can in a way that still kind of creates a natural shape. Okay. So now I have my object. Um, kind of like this is going to be the cutout of it. Uh, I'm going to click on my object. I'm going to go to the modifiers, going to add a Boolean. And then I'm going to make the target this here. So sometimes it doesn't always work perfectly and you can switch between fast and exact. And here it looks like it worked, but it did the inverse. So I need to select intersect. All right. And now I can see the actual silhouette of the rock inside. It means if I hide this, there we go. Our rock is completely safe and we can just get rid of this up. But before we do, before we get rid of this, we should apply the um, Boolean. So apply that, delete that. Okay, cool. So now if we go into the preview, you can see it looks good. If we shade smooth that sucker, it looks a little bit better. The grass uh, for 3D scanning is always a little bit rough. It's nice if you want to keep that texture, but I kind of personally don't like it. So I'm going to show you a little bit more of what I do to kind of get a little bit more of the asset so then I can drag and drop it into my scene scenes a lot more easily. So the first thing I do is I'm going to tab into edit mode for all of it and bring it down. Oh, I'm going to bring it down here like this. And I just kind of want to get it as flat as I can on the ground. So I'm going to change my views here and kind of get it down. Just gonna reset my 3D cursor real quick. All right, now it's in the center. I'm gonna right click on this, set my origin to 3D cursor. Now you can see it's at the bottom, which is good, but it, the, the cutout is not really flat. And I want it to be flat. I want it to be like this like smooth transition uh, from the bottom and goes up and then there's the object like that. I want it to go like that because that way it'll be easier once I put it on the ground and this slope here will allow me to intersect it with other geometry like like the ground and other objects next to it in a natural way i'll show you what i mean by that in a second so let's grab the whole edge and uh, flatten it out so i'm going to tab into edit mode i'm going to go into my edge select and all i need is one edge so i'm going to hold alt and then click one of the edge and then i get a couple like that but you can see that if i hold shift alt i can select more but this is tedious. I don't want to do this all the way around. So instead, what you can do is Alt click just one segment like that. And then Shift G opens up this select similar window. You can also go up here to select and select similar. And what I want to select is amount of faces around the edge. And what this does is it'll select all of the edges like that all the way around, which is exactly what I need. 
And then I'm gonna go into a side view, gonna have proportional editing still on. And you can see once I scale it on the Z axis, it's just too big. I'm gonna scroll down, get my shape a little bit smaller. I'm gonna scale it down on the Z so now it's a little bit more flat, but then I wanna bring it down so that it's the lowest point. Now here it's a little bit aggressive. So what I can do is I can scale on the Z and then I can bring my cursor in and as I increase in scale, I can control to kind of like that change. So it's a little bit smoother. And so I still, I don't mind, you know, the mound kind of how it looks like that, but I just want this yellow line to be the lowest point. So I have to bring it down a little bit more. So this takes a little bit of like, you know, finessing. You gotta work with it. Sometimes you gotta keep scaling it on the Z so that it's really flat. You can also press, you can see my um, proportional editing uh, circles like really, really tiny. So I'm gonna scale it on the Z and I'm gonna hit zero and that flattens it out completely. Okay, I increase the scale and then bring it back up. This part is bumping out too much still. You know, it's gonna create like a harsh shadow if I try to blend it into the ground. So one thing you can do is you can go into the sculpting and you can use this like, uh, I'll use the smooth tool here. First I'll use it with a low strength and I'll kind of go around and um, push all of the kind of grass and smooth it out. Cause I really kind of don't like how the grass looks when it gets 3D scanned. It gets, it just gets too bumpy and it's very noticeable as like geometry and not grass. So it doesn't really work for me. You can see here is where that really aggressive bump is. So I'm gonna increase the strength a little bit more and just focus on that outside edge. So that will smooth more of the detail. But um, this skirt area is kind of where basically the mesh will transition into whatever geometry is next to it. So like if it's sitting on the ground, it'll cut into it. Okay, I'm gonna show you a quick demo over here. Let me move this out of the way of why I like to get my asset to look like this at the end. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this one, but I'll show you two other ones I did earlier. All right, so there's a couple things going on here. Well, so first I added a ground plane. So I added this ground, it's just a single mesh with some subdivision, a texture from Polyhaven. I'm using the Polyhaven add-on. If you want the add-on, you can use my affiliate link down in the description. It just kind of lets me get all the textures from their library. So let me turn off the effect that I have on that real quick. Okay, so here's how it looks with the grass, just like the other one I did. And you can see that geometrically, like well, with the geometry, if I clip it into the ground a little bit, because it's got that hump, makes it a little bit easier to blend in with the environment, especially if there's like displacement and other textures and stuff. Um, so yeah, if we go here, we can kind of see it's like naturally fitting to the ground. It looks, it looks pretty good. But then, you know, you have that one issue of the texture doesn't really match. So if this was a grassy field, this probably would match a little bit better. But in my case, for the demo at least, I have this like rocky ground. So there's a nice capability in Blender where you can merge or kind of like blend two textures together. And so that's what's happening here. I'm gonna jump in here. So this is the base color for the rock. And then I have a mix shader and I have a group here. It's just a group. So if I go inside the group, you can see now this is the texture for the ground. And this is a uh, gradient texture. And what that's doing is, let me see if I can, if I can show you how that works. So if I plug this straight into there, into the view, aha, there we go. So what this is doing is this is basically separating where the textures will blend. So they blend like right here. And then I have this little color ramp that controls how much of it blends. And so yeah, basically where it's white, it's gonna be the original texture. And then where it's black, it's gonna be the ground texture. So that's the type of setup I have here. I mean, I can just, um, I'm just gonna show you. You can copy this if you want. And then that's, this is all regular stuff. This is me just kind of tinkering, figuring stuff out. Let me plug this in here. The texture goes into the shader. The factor goes into the factor. Okay. I just renamed the nodes to make it easier for me to remember what's what. So now there's like a little bit of an easier transfer. You can see there's like this transition between one to the other. And what's controlling where it transitions, the fade is also this controller. 
So it's just an empty. And if I click on this and go in here, you can see that the texture coordinate for the gradient is this fade controller, which is the empty right here. And so if I move this empty up, you can see the fade uh, elevates. And if I bring it down, it comes down. So I just kind of place this in an area where I think it's good. If I also move the rock, it changes where it goes. So um, yeah, hope that was kind of useful and there's some interesting nuggets of information. Uh, oh, well, last thing I wanted to mention was that you can get this demo file and these four rock assets on my Patreon. And when you go into the demo file, like if you want to take this texture setup that I have for like the transferring and everything, like the, the gradient transfer, um, what you'll do is in this file, you'll just hit shift A go to the group and find this texture transfer group. And then you need a mix shader. So I'm going to type in mix shader here. So the output goes in here. One goes here. Texture goes into the green shader and then factor goes into factor. So that's pretty much it. That's the setup in case you wanted to know how to do that. All right. See ya.